Okay, today we're going to do a nail clipping for to rule out onychomycosis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically clip the nail here and I'm going to get a piece of it to put for our pathology. So, let's go. The reflex for cutting thick nails, sorry, excuse me, thick nails is to cut them as you might your own fingernails. A fingernail clipper or toenail clipper that is purchased at a pharmacy requires inserting nearly the entire nail into the clipper, such as that the clipper nearly, such that the clipper clip, clips nearly the entire short axis of the nail at one time. Okay, so here is the long axis of the nail, and here is the short axis of the nail. So. Um, the reflex is to clip this way, this way, that way. But if I do that, you'll notice that the whole nail gets, I have to bite the whole nail in order to get it off versus clipping uh, a, a small wedge out. So go ahead. With thin nails, this is possible. With thick nails, it is much more difficult. As such, start the clipping with the blades of the shears parallel to the longitud longitudinal what? Longitudinal <laughs> axis. Axis of the nail plate. Okay, so, so here you have, uh, this is the parallel to the longitudinal axis of the nail plate. Okay, that's this way, yes? Gently insert the clippers under the nail plate. With the inferior pointy tip of the shears pointing, angling toward the nail plate. So you see, you see the, so I'm getting under there, but I'm pointing upwards, okay. Rather than straight toward the proximal nail fold. As you advance the shears toward the proximal nail fold, ask the patient if he or she has pain. Do you have pain? No. Okay. Advance as far as you need to or until the patient complains of pain. Once you have advanced toward the proximal nail fold sufficiently, it is time to close the clippers ortho orthogonally to or that direction. Orthogonally to that direction. Yeah, okay. That is, don't move in two directions at once. First toward the nail fold, then clip. Never push and clip at the same time because pushing is as gen is as a gentle motion and clipping is as a forceful motion and the result could be a forceful and painful injurious motion toward the proximal nail fold. Okay, so the idea is here is I'm not pushing and clipping at the same time. I'm here and then I clip. Okay. Always be sure to close the clippers slowly at first, asking the patient if he or she has pain as you as you are slowly closing. The idea here is to be sure you are not inadvertently clipping innervated flesh. Uh, okay, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to accidentally clip um, the nail, the nail bed flesh. Uh, so, so that's why I, I put down gently and then clip hard. Once you reach a point where you meet strong resistance, gradually increase the pressure. Okay, so here, so I'm just uh, jump, jumping ahead just for a second. I've, I've clipped the long axis. Now I want to take a wedge out here, okay? So I put the the parallel part of the blade pointing upwards, okay? Pain? No, okay? Now I I gently close, but I'm not closing forcibly. And now I'm slowly, slowly, slowly clipping, okay? And I have two options here. I can either clip or I can twist. Uh, but now I'm going to clip. Um, so but go ahead. On the first clip, typically no nail plate frag fragments should detach and fly out. That said, as you make the initial clip, do not reversibly. Do so reversibly. Yeah, so meaning, meaning again, slowly, 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 not pa. Okay. Be sure to see where the plate, the planes of fracture are. So and okay, so so here, I, 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 this initial clip, there was there wasn't really too much plane of fracture. I just clipped it there. Okay. It didn't like extend anywhere. Go ahead. If the plane of fracture appears to extend in a direction you do not intend, stop clipping and approach the nail from a different angle. <clears throat> Once you are sure you want to complete the clip, cover the nail that is between the shears with your thumb. Be sure your thumb is not in a position to be clipped when you do this. In fact, once your thumb is over the nail, exert a small amount of reversible pressure on the nail between the shears, checking to see that your thumb will not get caught. Right, so now I'm squeezing gently to make sure that my thumb isn't caught, okay? Complete the first clip. Okay, so now I'm going to clip. Well, okay, I can clip with the thumb off. Uh, what I'm going to do on purpose now is 
I'm gonna let this thing fly, okay? So just watch as it, everyone close your eye. Oh, it didn't fly. Oh, okay, so we got lucky. Well, I can clip it now, now it's gonna fly. Let's see, see that? Okay, very good. We'll catch that later, okay? You may feel pain at the force of the clipping shooting at your thumb. So, meaning that this thing that just shot out at me can shoot at my thumb and it like hurts a little bit, but it's not so bad. <clears throat> Go ahead. You have two choices. Clip at a 45 degree angle to the initial slit, thereby clipping out a wedge of nail plate. So I could clip that way. Okay, go ahead. Put your thumb over the wedge that will be released. Otherwise, it will, be, it will become a projectable toward your or any bystander's eye. Or grab the target side of the split nail plate parallel to its short axis. That's what I just did. Go ahead. And twist toward the proximal nail fold. Oh, you can twist that. You can grab it and twist upward. Okay. The later technique is good for thick psoriatic nails and onychomycotic nails. So, yeah, like if there was a lot more skin underneath here, it would be better to peel than to clip. But in this case, it's probably better to clip. Once twisted, the base is more easily and safely cut. Again, put your thumb over the segment that will you be You see released. how you can twist? If I had to, I could twist. Okay. To prevent this, to prevent its becoming a projectile. So now, projectile, so now I, I clip here. Okay, it didn't become a projectile. And I can, I can, in this case, I can go right along the, the nail axis here and just oh, clip. Now I have it in here, and I'm going to put it in the bottle. So, and this is going to be sent to pathology. You could also send it for culture. Once the initial wedge is cut out, successive squares of triangles can be cut out of the distal nail plate in similar fashion. So if it's really thick, I can cut triangle, 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 triangle. In this case, it made sense to just clip, clip, clip. Okay? However, with each succession, wedge resection or twist and clip maneuver, try to advance as proximal as proximally as you feel is needed to achieve your desired so, degree of depression. So sometimes, you know, you want to get all the way over here, in which case I would make another wedge here and then and then make another wedge here and like little by little get deeper and deeper into the nail but we didn't need to do that in this case when advancing the edge of the nail shears angle toward upward toward the nail plate again and communicate go with ahead the patient about pain while it see so if i wanted to get this this sucker out here i would i would put the wedge underneath but you see i'm pointing it towards upwards are you in pain? No. no. And now I gently squeeze so I don't make sure I don't catch his lateral nail fold or something. And then I, I have it grabbed. I put my finger over and I squeeze. And if I didn't squeeze, it would fly. Okay. That's it. Okay. So we have successfully clipped what we need to clip. That's it. Done.